Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, should I burn the bridge, wait it out, or ghost her? I've got an email. This is from a guy. He claims, claims, he's read 3% Man 16 times. And so he says for about a year and a half, he was in a platonic friendship with a woman who obviously he wanted to date. And after about a year and a half, tells her about his feelings and he wants to date her. She's not excited. She tries to friends on him. He says, thanks, but no thanks. Call me if you change your mind. She reaches out a few weeks later, invites him to go on a date. They make a date. She cancels at the last minute. Asks to reschedule. He reschedules. Same thing. She cancels at the last minute. And now four months have gone by and all he's, she texts him about once every week or two about some innocuous thing, doesn't bring up getting in together. He's like, should I, should I put my foot down again? Should I just ghost this girl? What should I do? Or just blow it up and tell her to leave me alone. So this is what happens when, I mean, I, I did this when I was real young. When I was in my teenage years, late or early 20s, it's like I did this stuff. It's like you waste an incredible amount of your time because attraction is not a choice. And even if there was attraction in the beginning, when you spend that much time with somebody and you just don't go for it, they, they recognize that you just don't have the confidence. And then they just see you as a platonic friend. And a lot of guys get into the platonic friendship type of zone thinking, I'll convert it later. She'll see what a great guy I am, then she'll really like me. But if she wasn't even attracted to you, if you didn't pass her minimum standards of attraction that I talk about in 3% Man, doesn't matter. It's totally irrelevant. You're just going to waste a lot of time, energy, effort, and money if you're spending money on her. <clears throat> so it's a good email of what not to do. So he says, hi, Corey. I'm a loyal fan who's read your book 16 times now and in the middle of another round. I think I need to read it at least once a month as I always seem to slip up. Well, the way you get better is through successful repetitions. If you just read the book 16 times but you don't go out on any dates and you don't talk to any women or try to get any numbers you're not going to get any better your skills aren't changing repetition is the mother of skill after all anyways my question is regarding is there ever a time to potentially burn a bridge a girl in my neighborhood that i was in a platonic friendship with for a good year and a half i mean just the phrasing of that to him, it's like a relationship. It was a friendship. So more than likely, he became her friend thinking, well, eventually, when she gets to know me, then she'll want to start sleeping with me. He said, we would talk nearly daily, go for walks, hang out at each other's places, etc. But there was no romance. I decided to ask her out. She asked if it was as friends. I said no, and I was interested in more. She said she was not in a place to be dating. Maybe true, but more than likely she's just saying, I'm just not in a place to be dating you. It's harsh, but you got to bottom line the actions because <clears throat> the actions tell you everything. I took that as low interest and told her to get in touch with me if she changed her mind. She tried to change my mind, but I held firm. After a couple weeks of no contact, she reached out to me and asked if I would like to go out for a drink. So, if we've been studying seven principles to get an ex back, and you spend a year and a half with somebody, every day they know what you're like. And she's tried to friend zone you. And you don't go for coffee, you don't go to lunch, you don't meet her out, you don't go to her place. If she wants another chance with you, then she's got to earn it. And that's why you make a date in the evening at your place to make dinner together. Because when you're making dinner in the evening at your place, sex and romance is on the table. And that's why women that are trying to jerk you around, get you to agree to friend zone, will, try, will not agree to come to your house to make dinner. They'll try to get you to meet them out. And that's why you politely decline and you just give the excuse that, yeah, it's been a long week just in the mood to hang at my place. If you don't want to come over and make dinner, then give me a call in a couple weeks and maybe I'll be up for meeting you out then. 
It's she's got to earn another chance with you is the way you need to look at it. And that's why the furthest distance that you're going to be willing to travel to see her is the distance that it takes to go from wherever you are in your house to your front door to let her in when she comes over. Simple as that. She don't want to come over and make dinner. You're not interested. <clears throat> this forces women that are trying to jerk you around or trying to in a roundabout way, get you to agree to something platonic, it in essence makes them shit or get off the pot. And so that's why women that aren't seriously interested in romance and haven't changed their mind won't agree to come over and make dinner together. But this guy didn't do that, even though he claims he's read this 16 times. I said sure and made a definite date when she asked him out for a drink. So, again, he's doing the opposite of what Seven Principles to get an expect says. He's doing everything on her terms. Once again, he's giving all of his power and his leverage away. Because basically, he's a dancing seal. He's willing to jump up, jump through his butt, jump through hoops. Whatever she wants, he'll drop what he's doing to go be at her beck and call. He says, the night of, she canceled claiming her sister came into town unexpectedly. Unexpectedly! The media uses that word unexpectedly. The economy unexpectedly contracted. Russia unexpectedly invaded Ukraine. She, <laughs> she did not offer to reschedule. That's not a good sign. I responded simply with, okay. A couple of weeks later again, she reached out to go for a drink. And I made another definite date. Again, doing the opposite of what Seven Principles Get an Expect says. The night of the date, she canceled once again, claiming she had a rough day at work and had to run errands for her parents. Ah, oh, shucks. I was really looking forward to going out and having a drink with you, but gosh darn it, I had a rough day at work. I have to run errands for my parents. Does that sound like somebody that's excited to see you? No. That's somebody that's like, eh, I'm not really into this. I said, okay, and she said, sorry. He says, yes, I am sure she was real sorry. She was really sorry, buddy. Sure. He says, that was four months ago. Since then... I have heard from her every week or two, but all she does is ask me a question such as if I know any good back exercises. <laughs> you could have said, well, I know the indoor Olympics. Come on over and I'll be happy to demonstrate with you. I will answer with one message and she replies, thanks, and to have a good day. Well, you've already asked her out twice and she's broken both dates. So at this point, and four months since the last time she brought it up, she's just stirring the pot. She likes the attention and validation that you gave her, and that's what she really wants. It's not that she wants your sexy body. She wants your attention and validation so she can feel better about herself. She set the date. She knows you want to go out with her, but she doesn't really want to go out with you, so she cancels at the last minute for some made-up bullshit reason. And she's really sorry about that. She's so sorry about it that four months have gone by and all she's done is waste more of your time and give you blue balls. So every time he hears her, I got a chance. This is it. Oh, she just wants to know about back exercises. Damn. <laughs> My question is, it seems apparent to me her interest must be low or we would have gone out by now. Yes. You got to bottom line the actions. Doesn't matter what she says. You told her what you wanted. She even brought up going out on two different dates, which she canceled at the last minute, wasting more of your time because she didn't care. Doesn't matter what comes out of her mouth. She says she's sorry. If she was sorry, she would have made it up to you with a quickness. But now it's been four months. So you have to be honest. Say she doesn't give a shit. And when you don't talk to her anymore, she's, the only thing she's going to miss is the attention and the validation. And I know it stings and it sucks, but you did it to yourself, dude. You spent a year and a half trying to fly under the radar and be her friend when you really wanted to bump uglies with her. But I also recall you saying to never ignore someone 
and that they will just go away if you stop asking them to go out and they don't ask you out. Well, in this case, because it's been four months and she hasn't brought anything up, what would you do? Let's get to that. Well, months have gone by and she hasn't gone away but isn't asking to do anything either. Do I just ghost her? I like that option. Why not? Because think about it from this perspective. A year and a half. Well, actually, I guess it's a year and 10 months now if you add in the four months that it's just gone nowhere. So you gave her enough time. You know what she's like. She knows what you're like. If she's not excited about spending time with you romantically, it doesn't matter. Her actions tell you she doesn't give a shit. So, yeah, I would absolutely ghost her at this point. I just wouldn't even reply. Because think about it from this perspective. If you met somebody else and she was all over you, like white on rice, and she's coming over, tearing your clothes off, I miss you, I can't wait to see you. And then you got this chick texting you, you're going to look at that and go, delete, maybe even delete block. It's like, don't waste my time, bitch. Not that you're going to say that, but I'm just saying. Look at her actions. She doesn't care. It'd be nice if she did, but we've seen no evidence of that. She knows where you live. If you ghost her and you ignore her, she might show up. She might send you a long text, but you're never going to leave your house. She's got to come over to make dinner together. It's got to be her idea. She's got to bring it up. But like I said, yeah, I would, I would just ghost and ignore her. Don't reply to any of these bullshit texts. It's, not, it's a waste of your time. So don't give her the attention and validation that she's looking for when she's a little lonely. He says, I was considering reiterating to only get in touch with me if she wants to pursue something romantically, but considering the low interest displayed, I'm not sure she's even worth giving that message to. Any help is appreciated. Yeah, that would have been something to do the second or third time she just reached out and asked you stupid things, but didn't bring up getting together. But what you really should have done is when she canceled those two dates in a row at the last minute, wasting your time and disrespecting your time because she didn't value it. And quite frankly, you don't value it either because that's why you let her waste it. You should have stopped responding to her months ago. And who knows, maybe she would show them, oh, I've had a change of heart. I didn't think I would. my feelings would go anywhere other than platonic f for you, but I really feel something now. That could have happened, probably wouldn't have, but it's possible. So I would just ghost her. There's just, she's wasting your time. If she really has a change of heart, she knows where you live. She'll come find you. She'll make more of an effort. And what she's doing now is making no effort. So now that you've wasted almost two years of your life, you've read this book all this time, you need to practice what's in this on other women so you can get better. Because you're not getting any practice with this girl. And plus, you're not even doing what I teach anyways. You're doing the opposite of it. So there's that. But the good news is, Quotes, Ruminations, and Contemplations, Volume 2 is out. So it's available on Audible, iTunes, Amazon, paperback, hardcover, Kindle, digital, iBook, whole nine yards. It's available everywhere. Your support is appreciated. If you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the Products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I... We'll talk to you soon.